This is Destiny Matters. Every man is born for a particular purpose, and it's God's pleasure to help you become it. Welcome to Destiny Matters. And now, your host, author, pastor, and speaker, Charles Casivante. America has tried to fight poverty. But 43 million Americans are living under poverty. And there is no richer nation on the face of the earth. No nation that has more technology than the United States. They have satellites. They can even kill you without coming to your house. They can send a cruise missile and hit Kampala without even stepping here. They can use drones to come and kick you out. They have all the power, all the technology, but 43 million Americans are living under poverty. Now, Uganda government, you're going to fight poverty and finish it. Obey the word of the living God and do the principles of the word of the living God. For God promises. If my people who are called by my name will do the following, I will heal the land. I call this nation to repentance. I call this nation to shun witchcraft. Uganda has a God, and his name is not Rubale. His name is Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. I call upon you to remember that you are where you are because somebody paid a price. And you pastors, apostles, and bishops, the freedom of worship you have in Uganda is not about titles. It's not that you accepted or you become religious like any other religion. Because it was not religion that brought you here. It was the Holy Spirit. It was the Holy Spirit. Because there was the time where you're not allowed to pray. Where you're not allowed to pray. You couldn't even have an overnight prayers. Now you are so fancy. You have titles before your name. Remember the Holy Spirit is the one who brought you here. Miracle Center, remember where you came from. It was in the fancy glass building. Ilim Church, remember where you came from. Full Gospel, remember where you came from. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. God bless you. Thank you for joining me here on Rest TV today. You're watching Destiny Matters. Today is a special edition because I had an opportunity of meeting who I believe is the father of this land in the gospel. God has raised men over the days that have passed by, introduced and put a brick on the gospel. But I truly trust that one of the men that have put a big block on the gospel of this nation has been Pastor Dr. Robert Kayanja. And I was super excited to sit down with him recently. And we talked about a range of things that pertain to the gospel, the development of this nation, fatherhood and uh, security and all kinds of things. And today, of course, I'll give you the first episode of what we talked about. There's been a mighty move and a revival in this land something that this country has never seen before. And we also discovered later on that even the nations of the world were not ready for this. This seems to be a thing that only God could have put together. When I sat down with Pastor Robert Kayanja, he, he was clear with me. He, told me, he told me, you know what Charles, over the years of ministry, I have never prepared for this. This is not something that you sit down and plan. It's not like a, a year's plan in, t in 20 years. This was only divinely designed and orchestrated by God. Only God could put this in place. So I sat down with the man of God and today, so we're gonna be traveling uh, right there in uh, Lubaga, 
uh, that's West Kampala and uh, as you see that magnificent building I, I truly believe that Lubaga Miracle Center is the, the biggest church in terms of capacity and sitting in this nation uh, sitting over close to 15,000 people in one sitting amazing uh, you know capacity building God has done mighty things uh, at the Lubaga Miracle Center can you imagine that over the last 40 years the man of God has stood on the altar almost every night or every week miracles have happened I mean thousands and thousands of healing miracles tangible proven by doctors you know God has healed God has caused the blind to see, the deaf to hear, the lame to walk, but not only at the Lubaga Miracle Center. Dr. Robert Kayanji has traveled the nations of the world. I believe he has been on every continent, in the streets, in the suburbs, in the small villages, and he is spoken on thousands of crusades. This is a man who has accomplished a lot in the gospel. It was, of course, very thrilling for me to even just have a sit down with me. The time he gave me to just listen to my questions, I was truly honored and I knew that God was doing something. And today I want to share with you that interview. But before we do that, he mentioned something very, very powerful. Uh, this this uh, 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 revival of 77 days of glory was prophesied almost 100 years ago. Can you believe it? 100 years ago. I'm, 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 I'm going to bring you a clip from the Azusa Street revival where uh, William Seymour and many other people had received the Holy Spirit for the first time, spoke in tongues, and they prophesied in, two th in uh, 18, 1800, 1800, that's almost 100 years ago, in 1800. And what is interesting is what Pastor Robert speaks about the Azusa, Azusa Street Revival and what really happened there. But 77 days of glory, what an amazing move of God. So we, I'm gonna sit down with Pastor Robert Kayanja, the man who God used. I want, we want to hear from him what happened, how does he feel about this. Uh, so welcome to Day to Destiny Matters. You better tell somebody to come around and watch this. This is Life Transforming. I'll be right back. April 9th, 1906. The location, 214, Bonnie Bray Street. On the third day of a 10-day fast, William Seymour began to preach to the prayer group from Acts chapter 2, verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Afterwards, Mr. Edward Lee asked Seymour to lay hands on him as they did in the scriptures and prayed that he would receive the Holy Ghost. When they finished, Lee lifted his hands and began speaking in tongues. This experience sent shockwaves through the room and at the same time, a young lady named Jenny Moore fell from her stool where she was sitting. The power of God fell and I was baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire with the evidence of speaking in tongues. As I looked at God, it seemed as if a vessel broke within me and water surged up through my being, which when it had reached my mouth, it poured out in a torrent of languages God had given me. I sang under the power of the Spirit in many languages, and in the home where the meeting was held, the Spirit led me to the piano, where I played and sang under the inspiration, although I had not learned how to play. Several other believers in the room were knocked to the ground by the power of the Spirit, and six of them began to speak in tongues as well. Their shouts of joy could be heard throughout the neighborhood, as the prayer meeting overflowed to the front porch. Many curious neighbors gathered and soon others began speaking in tongues and praising God. The word spread rapidly. By the next morning, the crowd had grown so great that it was difficult to approach the house. The porch became a pulpit as William Seymour began to preach to the crowd. This continued for three days and nights. It has been said that during this three-day street service, the house shook under the exuberant praising of a hungry people. Even on one occasion, the porch collapsed at the weight of all the people. Services continued almost day and night with healings reported and hundreds of people filled with the Spirit. After the third day, it was determined that a new location was needed to house the growing crowd of seekers. William Seymour and his followers soon found a vacated two-story church building. 
previous use to stable horses. It had been converted into apartment housing upstairs with a large, unfinished, barn-like room on the downstairs. Its address was 312 Azusa Street. The revival at Azusa stretched from the early morning deep into the evening every day for three and a half years. One woman described the services with the following words. A sound like a rushing mighty wind filled the room and I was baptized with the Holy Ghost in fire. Rivers of joy and love divine flooded my soul. God also gave me the Bible evidence of receiving this experience and letting me speak in another language. But the greatest joy in my heart was the knowledge that I had received power to witness for Christ and power to tell others what great things God can do in a human life. William Seymour would preach and soon, following a sermon, the altars were flooded with seekers. No urging was necessary. By the end of the first month, you could find 800 people gathered within the building and over 500 gathered outside and it only continued to grow. There was such power in the preached word that people would shake in their seats and many would have the power fall on them as the word germinated in their hearts and they would burst out speaking or singing in other languages. Spirit. Would they lay hands on them or would they receive the baptism and speak with tongues back in the audience? Or did they have a tarrying room or what? Well, they had a room upstairs they called the upper room where you went to tarry for the Holy Spirit. But we could not control the Spirit of God. Sometimes a person would receive the Holy Ghost right in an audience without even an altar call. Just stand right up and begin speaking in other tongues as the Spirit gives us. I maintain you don't have to come to a specific place called an altar. You give up in your heart and the Lord will save you then, there, wherever you are. The people heard them speak in their own language. The Japanese, Chinese, and all the different nationalities, they heard them speak and the gospel was preached to them. You mean they had not learned these languages? Oh no, they had not learned because the Spirit of God filled them. Now you saw this and heard this with your own ears. I certainly did. No, Dr. Simon. Thousands of people visited the mission services over the course of three years, whether they were drawn by a spiritual hunger or a fascination for the bazaar. Whatever the case, those who came were impacted. Many who came with unkind motives left full of the Holy Ghost and a desire to spread the message of Pentecost. Hundreds of people were baptized with the Holy Ghost. Then hundreds turned into thousands and thousands turned into millions. History records the Azusa Street Revival as the greatest revival to ever sweep across North America. More than any other time in Earth's history, we need the Spirit to fall again on us. Now is the time. Today is the day. We need a fresh outpouring of God's Spirit on our nation like never before. Welcome to all of you that are joining us today on Destiny Matters here on Rest TV. This, of course, is one of its kind. We are super excited as we are going to be diving into one of the greatest revivals of our time. I don't think that in, in, the, in the previous years we have seen anything like this in this nation, in Uganda and in East Africa. And uh, maybe we have limited information, but also in Africa. This hasn't happened in a long time, or this has never even happened. And we, were, we are grateful tonight, we have driven uh, down here at the Rubaga Miracles in the Cathedral to meet with the father of, of, of our nation, a man that God has used for the last 40 years in this nation to build uh, the body of Christ. I'm so excited today, we are with Pastor Robert Kayanja, we're going to be talking about 77 days of glory. Uh, stay good on your television, this is an amazing season. And we're going to be showing you footage of what God has been doing and uh, some of the details from the man that God has used himself as we have conversation. Of course, I am also super excited, I'm, I'm just struck, but God is going to help me to do this interview as you pray for me also. Uh, we are very excited, man of God. And what a joy, first of all, for you allowing to give us the time. A lot of people, of course, have seen the, the 77 days of glory, but uh, it will be exciting to, to hear from you. And first of all, we want to thank God for you and for your life. And recently, uh, there was a flood on your life, but we thank God that he protected you. And we are, we are, we are very, very excited. Um, 77 days of glory. 
is there anything that you've seen before you've been around doing ministry? Is, is, is that something that you've envisioned, seen before, you know, in your ministry time? Thank you for having me, uh, Charles. I, it's, uh, it's good to be on, on Rest TV and we greet all of you who are viewing us today. Um, revival is, uh, is a prophecy which was prophesied even before Jesus Christ came. Uh, even, let's, let's take it, revival is what God was saying when Adam sinned. You know, there was a conference. People look at it and they think it was just a man fell, then God came and asked, where, where are you? But that conference was actually attended. It was a meeting, not a conference. It was a meeting which was uh, orchestrated in the Garden of Eden. And I know the Garden of Eden, the Garden of Man. And, uh, and, and God was there, the devil was there, and man was there. That was the first time whereby the three entities met. Now, man, of course, in that meeting, the devil was already, uh, was already overpowered, was already overcome because he was one with a snake. But Adam, Eve, and God were on the one side. So even if you had to take a vote, Satan had lost completely in the garden. We think man lost, Satan lost. Yeah. When it came out, it was evident that they had agreed that the seed of a woman will crush the devil's head. So even judgment and sentencing and, the, and, 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 and investigation was already carried out. And God had already covered man, and replaced his leaves with leather. And then from there, we begin to expect, now it was upon man to produce a woman yeah. who will produce a seed that will crush the devil's head. So everything was now set. God was waiting for you or me to produce something. And that has been, the, God has been consistent. That's what he does. He's waiting for you and me to produce that which he will anoint. Now, because of religion and because of misunderstanding of God's plan of how he works, we have formulated things thinking that this is what God wants. You know, and, and yet God is saying, I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting to see what is going to happen. If you do this, I will do this. If you hearken to the voice of the Lord your God, I will not put upon all the diseases I put upon the Egyptians. If you hearken to my voice, I'll release all these blessings upon you. So heaven has already taken a move. Yeah. You know, one of the things that, uh, Charles, which is amazing, is that God took a move when man was in sin and he came to him. Man was in a foreign state. Was already in sin. Man did not take a step to go to God. And, and that's how he prolonged his problem. But we look at Cain. When Cain sinned, killed his brother, and God said, you are vagabond, you are useless, you are everything. Then Cain moved where God was. And he said, I'm sorry, this is too much punishment. He didn't, he didn't what to say. He would have said, can you forgive me? Can you wipe it away? He simply says, it's too much. In other words, he was saying, just give me a little pen punishment. Just really said, but this is too much as though he could bear it. And then God, when he left God, the man who was a tiller of the ground, his call was in the ground. His call was, I was sharing with the people yesterday in the service, and I, and I was sharing with them about the anointing number six. He said how Cain's life changed from a planter, a tiller, a grower of fruits into a builder of cities. A man who has killed his brother, now he builds a city. So, but he's still dealing with the ground. Yeah. You know, the enemy can only distract you. He knows your destiny. I mean, we written a book called uh, Destiny Matters. Do we really understand our destiny? Do we really understand who we are? So when we talk about revival, revival is not a new thing. Yeah. Of course, you revive that which is dead. Which is there. And that's what I mean. Um, my question then. So what, if you look at 77, I feel like it's not a, it's a revival in, a, in, in the world, but I feel like it is a visitation, like because yeah. very few things in the past look like that. Yeah. We never had anything like yeah. that, according to, to my recent memory. Yeah. 
I mean, this uh, was... Not even recent memory in, 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 in 100 years. Uh, the, the, um, the people of Azusa, yeah. because they look at all revivals, because we bench ourselves, we speed field churches, we bench ourselves on Azusa Street. And uh, that is the, the very known. And the man said a prophecy, uh, uh, Seymour, uh, William, Seymour. Uh, e William Seymour. He said, a um, uh, hundred years from now, there will be a revival. Now, what makes 77 Days of Glory uh, very peculiar and very unique in its setting was that in 1909, this man Seymour had run a revival for seven years. He prophesied on the ninth year that there will be a revival after 100 years. As soon as he prophesied, 10 years later, there was a pandemic similar to COVID called the Spanish flu. And uh, people had to wear masks, churches had to be closed, bars had to be closed, everything has to be shut down. 50 million people died worldwide. Now, what makes it very unique in its, in its own setting, in the setting of 77 Days of Glory, that that was the man prophesied 100 years from now. Now, from two, 1909 plus 10 years when the pandemic began, it began in 1919. A hundred years later, it becomes 2019 when COVID began. Wow. So it, it, it is amazing. It's literally amazing. And uh, then the people of Azusa came here, looked at what we are doing. Even the city of Los Angeles, because the city of Los Angeles um, prides. Someone should bring me, um, uh, should bring me my, uh, my, uh, the commendation that we, we got from, um, from, from, from the place there. It is very, very important for the, our viewers to see that what we are talking about is not actually we'll give you a footage so that you can slide it in. Uh, the the people, can, people can know that this was not just a, a miracle center, Lubaga miracle center a program of pe putting up prolonged services. No, this was a global yes. effect. It had a global effect. And honestly, in, in, in any normal church setting, it doesn't add up. Yeah. You cannot explain how presidents came, yeah. people traveled from from the nations of the world yeah. just to come and tap into what was happening here. Yeah. Uh, you know, people spending night here and then going to work the next morning yeah. and, then, and then coming back. Yeah. I, was, I was looking at, at footage yesterday when you were on Channel 44 and, and, and you're talking about these mass weddings, mass yeah. baptism, yeah. salvation of souls, yeah. like, never seen, like never before. Yeah. How people turn to God in three years and you're talking about 200,000 people. Yeah. You know, I was wondering, and I was looking at myself, and, and, and I'm wondering, and now I think it makes a lot of sense because I think it's, it's Pastor Ben who, who had been here before. Yeah. And prophesied. Pastor Ben was here in 2007. Yeah. No, 2009. Exactly when the man prophesied in 1909. Pastor Ben was here in 2009. And then 10 years later. Yeah. And, uh, and he said, you shall see it. You know, you know the things that we... Are happening in our days and we don't know the magnitude and the size of what is happening because probably after we are gone those are, that are going to come after us are going to realize how powerful it was when they try to do it you see something is not powerful until you try it a lot of us think that these things you know we we trivialize despise our fathers of the land because we assume that what they have done we can do but i tell you something this was a mighty move of god as a matter of fact Pastor Benny Hen came to Uganda and prophesied about this move. And this too is interesting because Pastor Kanya speaks about it, that uh, it, it was exactly 10 years, just as it was in the days of William Seymour, that there was this, the Spanish flu and now there's, there's COVID-19. But the, the move of God was in that time, such an amazing move, or close to about eight years of a great revival. And so I want to give you a clip where Pastor Ben Hinn came to Raga Miracle Center and spoke about this. Even, even Pastor Kandi just mentions that a little bit in the interview. This has been a prophetic night. Now you need to do this. Lift your hands and say, Father, don't let me die till I see it. 
say it again. Shout it! And I prophesy, Pastor Robert, come here, my brother. I prophesy you're going to sit in this church. Sit in this church. Marokate. Oh. Yalva Marokate. You're going to see it. Your wife will see it. Your children will see it. The dead will be raised in this building. Notable miracles will happen in this building. God has overlooked our weakness. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, Pastor Robert. Nor doth he reward us according to our iniquities. But his mercy is greater. As high as heaven is, as far as the east is from the west is, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. As he pitieth his children, so Lord pitieth them that fear him. We are not going to see it because we are so righteous. We're going to see it because of His mercy. Great mercy. Lift your hands, say it's your mercy. Say it's your mercy, Lord. It's not my righteousness. It's not my good deeds. It's not my holiness. It's your mercy that will do it. And on that day, wonderful Jesus, I will tell you, and heaven and the holy angels will hear me tell it, it's your mercy. I will praise you forever for your mercy. And I ask you, Keep me from falling and present me before your throne with joy, blameless, blameless, perfect in your presence. I trust you to do it and I will live the life you've called me to. I'll try my best. I'll do all I can to do it. Give me the grace and the strength to live a holy life. And yes, Lord, before you come back to earth, I will see it. Your mighty power displayed mightily. I will see it. I will see it. The miracles we saw in 77 days of glory, unbelievable. There was a professor, there was a lecturer of Mbarara University. Uh, University of, of Science and Technology. She had cancer. They had removed the breast and cancer came back and it dug a big hole in her chest. She was smelling. She was wearing a pamper on the breast to hold the pus. She was brought and laid down there. The power of God touched this lady. This professor, and she got healed. It is just, I mean, the mad people with, with the cufflings, I mean, uh, handcuffs, you know, cufflings, handcuffs. The miracles we saw in 77 Days of Glory could amaze you on a daily basis. 
for eight years on a daily basis. Every night there is a miracle. There is a wonder. There is somebody saved. There's someone coming back to the Lord. There's someone starts a ministry. The body of Christ now is bigger. I mean, I don't know how many young people right now who are in ministry who are touched by seven, uh, 77 days of glory. So many that happened, but a lot of people come yeah. out the streets. Yeah. We saw the prostitutes coming out. We saw yeah. gangs. Yeah. Gangs. There's actually a pastor now in Kawempe yeah. who calls himself uh, the, the ghetto pastor. Yeah. But he, he made, I mean, he got born again right here. I've had them all on the show. Yeah. And just some, an amazing one. Yeah. You know, one of the things I was, I was seeing from your pastor, and I think for us were, you know, the younger generation, learning from you, I, I, I don't think any, any of that was was crafted. It was yielded into the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And, and in this time, you write seven books yeah. about the Holy Spirit. Yeah, eight books. Eight books. Not only that, but also we, we wrote a book called Readdressing the Imbalance. Yeah. Uh, addre uh, you know, addressing, um, breaking Africa's bondage for 400 years. Afri Africa's been in bondage for 400 years. And um, about two years ago, it clicked to 400 years since the African slaves were taken to America and the rest of the world. The, uh, then God began to... Uh, Charles, revival comes out of people crying to the Lord and people's obedience. A visitation is God's grace. Is when God sees the cry of the people then he remembers the covenant. You know, visitation is out of the covenant. So while God was visiting Egypt to deliver them out of bondage, it was because they cried. So God was visiting them because they cried. But because of obedience, then they were revived. So before that, God told us to do 50 crusades. Now, I did, when God said numbers, sometimes we don't, Put numbers because our languages, the, the 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 verb is different from the digit. So when God said twenty, the Hebrews understand it quickly. They run it back to the numbers. The word in Hebrew. That's why the language Hebrew is a language of God, because it's both numeral and word. Yeah. So when God says, like for example, we are now an anointing number six, he said number six is in Hebrew's vav. Vav is a nail. Vav is a hook. So for me, when I said vav, it's vav. But in the Hebrew, it is a nail. It is a hook. So in other words, it's time to hook yourself with something powerful. It's time for you to go fish something right now. It's time that the, 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 everything is already set. So for us, we don't think like that. You know, um, you, you have you have a word for the action, and you have a word for how to do it or how how, how to carry it out. And, and that's why it, it, the, the the Jewish people they were able to tap into God, and God remained with them. Could you imagine from Abraham? all the way to Jesus Christ, there is no prophet who is foreign. We are talking about centuries. We are talking about millennials, millenniums. God did not use or work anywhere except the Holy Land, except among the Jews. Everything we are reading today and we claim it, Prophet Isaiah, Jeremiah, what have you, Peter, Paul, they are all Jews. They are all Jews. So, so um, that tells you that God, you're not gonna, you're gonna, you're not gonna impress God with numbers or with tears. God is not, God is not emotional. He, he, he can choose to stay in one place. He can choose to stay in one place. For a long time, he's the God of covenant. That's right. So that's why you find out that when we go, are visited by God, when God chooses to visit you and do something, I, I, I want I want to 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 say this, this um, the, throw this one in uh, because I feel the Spirit wants me to say this. When the Holy Spirit came and visited me, I had no idea that what I'm doing now is what He was calling me to do. Of course, some of the things that I see or I do is a consequence of my obedience or my response yeah. 
No, I will not say obedience, I will say response. Then you begin to see the thing is bigger than you. It's bigger. It is bigger than you. That's when you begin to be humble. Sometimes people say, how can I be humble before God? Well, just watch God. You just obey, yield to God, and then watch him do things. Then you realize it's not you. Yeah. When, I, when, when, when we started Miracle Center up there, Luaga Miracle Center, we had no idea that Miracle Center was going to open up in 3,000 centers globally. And uh, 3,000 centers all over the world. Now you come. For example, like Kansanga Miracle Center, it starts. It's a ministry, bigger, greater, moving, breaking grounds, bathing more ministries, doing all kinds of stuff. It was a spark. But when you see now, there is a television station. There, there is, and there's going to be radios. There's going to be things like that. And you ask yourself, what is this? This cannot be a business plan. <laughs> This is not a business plan. This is a move of the Holy Spirit. This can be genius. Like, you know, that yeah. I set out to, you know, to go and do yeah. this. And sometimes I, I even ask myself when I watch you, like, okay. Did you ever envision this? Did you ever imagine that one day you're going to affect nations? I mean, I, up to this kind of magnitude that I saw in, in Kenya recently, and the president is, is, is kneeling down and, and wants to, to be laid hands upon, and uh, people are coming from different countries to come to Miracle Center. Here, I don't know if that is something that you, even in, in your prayer, did you ever, when you were at the Kawosu address? A lot of us may take this to be for granted, and we may think that probably it is ordinary. But look at that. People that they were living together in wedlock and were not married, decided to walk down the aisles. I mean, mass, massive weddings. This, like, never seen before in our nation. I mean, people repented of their sins. And so I want to show you a little bit of those clips uh, that are coming through from the um, mass weddings. Look at that. Look at that. Look at what God can do. I mean, who has ever dreamt of anything like that in this nation? And the challenge is that we may pass it quickly and miss out on the opportunity of seeing what God did. But look at that. I mean, everything at that wedding was free, by the way. Free gowns, free cakes, free suits. They did not have to pay anything. That was an opportunity like never seen before. The man of God provided everything for free. You know, a lot of people can be speaking against the church and saying oh, what people are doing. These are money-making projects and all that, blah, blah. But you look at that. How can you explain that? Where do, in what kind of class do you put that? sure if you know this but when we first met i got so nervous i couldn't speak in that very moment i found the one and my life i found it missing peace so as long as i live for love Heaven hold you You look so beautiful in white And from now to my very last breath This day I'll cherish You look so beautiful in white Tonight What we have is time my love is endless And with this ring I say to the world You're my every reason You're all that I believe in With all my heart I mean every word So as long as I live alone
there are almost 400 couples. Amazing, amazing, amazing. This was a revival. I, I, I said, I asked the man of God if he had ever seen this before in his years of ministry, and these were his answers. No, you can't pray for those things because you don't see them, you don't know them. These are things that are happen spontaneously because they're driven by the Holy Spirit. It's, it's for me, I mean, as, even as you look at what, what God is doing uh, about the, the records that were given, where 200,000 people came to the Lord in a spell of three years, 200,000 people came to the Lord, newly born again, and those were the ones that were recorded. I mean, celebrities of this nation, some of them are not really now in the church, but they came. Some had been on drugs. I know some of the known celebrities of this nation that had been, uh, you know, stricken and addicted to drugs. Uh, look at like one of those ones. Just walk to the Lord and give their lives to Christ. And it was a massive move. This was never seen in this nation. I've been singing in the world. But, but I thank God for saving me. Come on, somebody, clap your hands to Jesus. What's your name? Brenda Birunji. Brenda Birunji are my names. Those are the names I used to use. The, name, the real name is Jesus. Are you ready to pray to the Lord? I want to ask God for forgiveness, first of all. Because, because I was raised in the church, I was raised in salvation. I'm asking God to forgive me. No, I'm sumba wanga and so you were because Sima Chichaba. I don't know what happened. It just happened. Uh, I was one of the worship leaders in Makere for Gospel Church. Just a project film, Naja Ninge Dabugenzi. Sabi take a kasa kola cha. Just stood up and went. I just picked up my things and joined that thing. When again, da Ninge da up to Kenya. So I went to Kenya. Na ye walwe chintu ngasina bak Malayo story. Walwe chintu msumba cha yoke da ku Friday. There is something See, Pastor said on Friday. That when God gives you an anointing, no, and you take it to the world, you use the, the strings keep going one by one. When I was going I to was for rated the, among the best Ugandan singers. Tasker Project film, I was one of the best Ugandan singers. When, that I that I Kenya, when I went to Kenya, the voice disappeared. Just like that. And oh, to Jesus, I surrender all to Him. I freely give all the pleasures, all forsaken. Take me, Jesus. Do you need my 
Thank you for watching Destiny Matters. When I come back from the break, we will talk more with Pastor Robert Kayanja about uh, Karamoja, the cry, the cry of the nation, and how he responded to the cry of the nation. Stay tuned for more when we come back. Welcome back from that break. You're watching Destiny Matters. I'm sitting down today with Dr. Robert Kayanja of Rubaga Miracle Center. As we said it on before, I let you know that for almost 40 years, man of God has stood on that altar, ministered, directed, spoke into lives of leaders and very many people in this nation. I mean, his ministry is older than some of you that are watching me today. Uh, he's been there longer than you've been. And so if this was an, a, a great opportunity for us to sit down with him. And I believe that your destiny is about to shift to the next level by this level of understanding. So stay glued. But recently, Dr. Robert Kayanja moved into the grace of Joseph. And he did not only respond to the cry of a church or of the body of Christ, but he responded to the cry of a nation. How he has been able to direct this, nobody knows. But the Lord really directed him, gave him power and the ability. And today, the body of Christ is benefiting from such a mighty move. I mean, the man of God responded in such a way that you, you can never really, really put together. And so I want to take you back into the interview when I asked him about Karamoja and uh, what they have done. And, and we're going to show you uh, many clips uh, from Karamoja, especially beginning with that cry. What really inspired him? Uh, you know, to be able to go out and do farming. I mean, the only thing I knew about Karamoja over the years was that people walk naked. But, whoo, the man has surprised us. He's done what we couldn't do, and what an inspiration. You're watching Destiny Matters. Children who are future of, of our country. And we are buried. The people have survived COVID. People have survived Ebola. Ebola. And they die because there's no portion. On the hands of Ugandans. Global change, global climate change, climate change, climate climate change. change. What are you talking about? It's all over the world. Not only Uganda. But for you, for those pastors, I told I called the pastor. And I said, Pastor. And today I met another one who always goes to. Kalamoja to preach. It's from Kasese. And I told him to go and also help mobilize where we are going to send the food. Saturday, we are sending trucks to, to Kalamoja. Actually, you can hear her trying to whisper because she's not even having the energy to actually say it louder. Land should not reject us to a point where it cannot feed its people. It does not take and you have bread on your table. There's a reason why somebody out there is sleeping hungry and you have bread on, bread on your table. They are cold in their beds and you are warm in your bed. It's our responsibility right now to do what is responsible by God and give to 
to those people. But also speak to God and inquire distinctively for our land as a people and find direction. And I really want to thank Pastor Robert for giving us the opportunity as the church in Uganda, as the people of Uganda to participate, to be a part of this. Maybe you don't have a truck and you can't take the food yourself. Maybe you don't even know how to mix the food so that it can have the result it is having. Maybe you don't, you don't have a platform to come and invite others to do it. But you can do something. Uh, this is a little boy you're seeing on the uh, the covers you've been seeing. Um, the one you've been seeing there. That um, little boy. That is that is that is the boy. You yes. 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 This is not true. These people, uh, you know, social media, uh, hollow ballows, uh, it's not true. So it, it kept on going and going. And I had a burden on my heart and I said to Pastor Chris, I said, Pastor Chris, why don't you go there and find out, take a team, but take also some food just in case it's true. So we took two trucks and uh, he, he cried while he was there. He said, this, this is bad, the situation is bad. So when he came back, we told the people, and uh, the people responded so overwhelmingly. Uh, within a month, we are back in Karamoji again with 60 trucks. And uh, we were now moving. Then we went into an area of a national cry because it was Karamoja crying. And um, then we, we, people gave mattresses, people gave everything. I think we were live on television for two hours. And, um, and we were overwhelmed. People gave 600 million. And the Lord said, that money is not to be eaten. That's a seed. So as I looked at the video they brought, I, it had rained two days. And our vehicles were stuck on the road. And uh, thank God for security agents. They brought their tank, pull, pull us out of the mud. And, um, and then I, I saw greenery. I said, if there's green, I can at least plant dodo. I can at least plant just little things that can grow in two months. Instead of taking food here, I said, no, 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 I think let's get tractors. Let's get uh, seeds. So we did. And I didn't know the seasons there. We are now in October. Yeah. October 12th, we start plowing and planting. By end of October, it was still raining. By 15th, I did not know. 15th November, rain stops in Karamoja. It does not rain for three weeks. And then it may re resume again. I said, for us, we just planted. We thought we were this way. Oh, my God. Only the Holy Spirit would have saved us. So the maize had grown up to this level, and it was heat in one week. It all dried up. And then I said, no, we are not going to give up. Because everybody warned us, don't go, you will lose, you don't do this. We had a, a machine called the Rainmaker at our farm. So I mobilized the team. I said, go to Karamoja with the rainmaker. Let's start creating rain. So we created rain. And the maize that was dead became alive again. And we pushed. It grew. We harvested beans and maize. We distributed it. So in the beginning, how many acres were there? We've started with about 300 acres, both for beans and maize. And then after that, we, I decided, no, we, we need to go further. But by the way, I've never stepped in Karamoja, but until then, I had not been in Karamoja. I was just looking at the, the reports from the soil scientists. I was just looking at the patterns of war, of rain. And then I said, no, Napak district is, is good, is conducive. The land is flat. You, the, it doesn't have more stones. Because farming has to do with cleaning the ground, and then you plant the seed. Jesus taught us about the, the, the seed that went to the stones. The seed that went to the stones. Jesus, the Bible, Charles, the Bible has everything anybody wants to do in detail. It's because we don't read it. We call it a religious book. So if you're going to be a farmer, you need to read the Bible, the story of the soul. 
And, uh, and so, to make the whole story short, we, uh, I, I looked at the soil, the depth of the Rome soil, the black soil, the fertile soil, and then the depth of the soil, which is useless, which is always underneath. Then I looked at the weather, weather patterns, then I looked at everything else. And then I said, okay, we go to Napak. Okay, Napak district was very good. They welcomed us. Uh, owners of the land gave us land. But then we had to clear it. We had to clear it. Karamojong little trees are very small but very hard. They've been there for a long time. And in farming, you don't like birds, especially when you're going to grow cereals or rice, sorghum, wheat. The birds, you've given them a nest if you put trees around. But again, you can't destroy all the trees. So we had to separate, you know, space the trees in, in meters, meters by meters, 100 meters, 100 meters. Clearing the field, you know, I had to get someone, an expert in that, an agronomist. I had to bring dr good drivers because these tractors have never been probably seen in Uganda. Oh, I mean, uh, they're not ordinary tractor. We're using, instead of African plow, we're using the Darabos. We're using the Kelly. So you need now to really go to another level. So we have some of the people who are in Karamoja driving our machinery are from Kenya. E even when the combined harvester came, we have some Ugandan, one of them who is very expert in driving it, has been working on different farms. But the other two are Kenyans. So the, these machines are, are not ordinary machines. You, you need to know the buttons and buttons, where to place what, where to put. So the tractors and that stuff, I think someone needs to, to know the, the kind of picture, the cost of just one of those. Yeah. No, the, the, the cost of one of those, if I tell you, Either you think we are the one who robbed the, the, the last bank. The, the, the cost of those, you're talking about dollars. You're not talking about Uganda shillings. And uh, so if a dollar in Uganda is 3,700, 3,700, and someone tells you tens of thousands of dollars per tractor without implements, then definitely you realize that this is too much. Only God would have done that. Only God would have done that. Where we are right now, only God. Yeah, so look at that, look at that. And, and Pastor Robert has also got a personal farm. I mean, there's a, a drone shot of that farm that he developed just in the, years, in the days of COVID. But look at that. I mean, this is a time that the church must be inspired. We're going to have influence and dominion in areas beyond the four walls of the church. God is calling us to that dimension, that level, to operate at beyond the normal, you know, known, uh, run, you know, quadrangles of the church. Today, it doesn't matter who, whether it is born again or not. I love this clip when Pastor Robert Kayanja went to, uh, to, to Karamoja for the first time. They, they, they didn't even know who he was. And babies have been born and named the names of Robert Kayanja. I mean, amazing. You cannot put this in known words. This is super amazing. But uh, so I'm going to give you a few more clips from, uh, from Karamoja, a desert arid area turned into an actual farm food producing nation. Now with, with faith and projection that Karamoja can feed Africa. Karamoja said no. When are you going? I said I don't know because of my nature of work. But I want to thank you. We came here for charity to help feed the people, mitigate the problem of hunger. Then they came back again. Then we realized people needed the clothes, needed more than just food. We needed to plant food here. When I saw your soil on a video, I knew we can grow food here. Now when I was coming in and I could see from Lake Choga, all the way here, I've never seen such a beautiful place. It is so rich, it is so ready to feed Africa. And how do we change Africa? We work together. How do we change Africa? We work for peace. Only God. So that's why I said revival. When the Spirit of the Lord come upon you, you begin to see things you could not see before. 
you begin to tap into things you never tapped before. You begin to become more productive. That's why, uh, uh, Charles, we can't say we are spirit-filled and our performance are mediocrity. That's right. It's, they, they, they don't tarry. The more you get into God, the more you get into the Spirit, is the more you're going to be more active, is the more you're going to... That's why when God visited Abraham, Papa Abraham, Abraham was 75. 75. But then the man walked with God another 100 years. But the 100 years were not sitting down years. They were years of fighting. He led a troop. He had 318 trained soldiers with weapons. In his own house. And, and, and when you really look at it, you said, okay, here we are, we are filled with the Holy Spirit. But what is our productivity? What, is, what are we putting on the table? What is the manifestation? How can we show that, that you, you're filled with the Holy Spirit? Exactly. Yeah. And I believe, Pastor, you have done that so well. Because right now, even those who criticize the faith have begun to speak slowly. Because you're talking about 2,000 acres now, plus. Yeah. And I don't know, I've been hearing stories which I need to confirm from you, that you've got land in Kenya now. Yeah. Sudan. Yeah. Is that These countries have given, what we do, they have given land in South Sudan. Wow. They have given 100,000 acres. They say, come and plow. Kenya, <laughs> we were just there. They say, here's, here's land. Here's land. We went a meeting with the government and everybody. He said, here's the land. We do that. Not only that, I just got a call from the president of, of Malawi. Yeah. The president of Malawi is, is asking, how can we turn these things around in Zambia? People are going to be flying here and, 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 and go to seek in Karamoja. <laughs> What's happening? What are we doing there? That, that, that's why I say that, 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 that when revival hit and the visitation came, the Lord was to take the gospel beyond here. If you haven't been inspired by this, I don't know what will inspire you, but I'm totally blown. I feel like so excited to be part of this move that God raised the Miracle Center and what God has been doing over the years. And we, we, we believe God that you and I that's watching today, our role is to carry on this torch to the next generation and do and try to fit into the shoes of our fathers because they have done a lot more than we can ever imagine. But may the Holy Spirit help us. They've given us a simple solution. They obeyed God. They responded to the call and this enhanced the results. However, coming up next week on Destiny Matters, we'll be talking more with Pastor Robert Kayanja and then we discuss. The father is not about age. Yeah. It's about DNA. So when you say you are a spiritual father, where are your children? You see, Jesus said, Father, Father, because he said, I do nothing unless I see my Father. So, uh, oftentimes when people use words casually, these are our spiritual fathers, the fathers of the nation. Hey, yeah, that, that, is, uh, that is another level. Jesus said, call nobody Father. Time cannot permit us to go on with Destiny Matters tonight, but more episodes are coming up in the coming days. Keep glued on Rest TV and on Destiny Matters. I'll bring you more. We had we sat down and talked and talked and talked, and more is going to be shown up in the coming days of October. The Lord is good, is mercy truly and do us forever. This is your month of victory. Number 10 is the number of God. God does mighty things. This is your October. Believe it. May, may, may the Lord be able to do something powerful. Uh, number 10 becomes God's authority, God's law to coming out unto us. God is mind for us. It was the 10 commandments. It was the 10 laws that God brought forth. I trust God and I believe that today this number shall resonate with you. Uh, God bless you. But however, I want to ask you to lift up your hands for a moment in your house because Dr. Robert Kanye is going to speak a blessing on you. And until next time, Keep your eyes on Rest TV. We are addressing the balance, breaking Africa's 400 years of bondage, confusion, stagnation, poverty, sickness, and disease. You, you will, you, this is something scripture, it's known social science, or, uh, you know, th th this will open your understanding of knowing where you are, what you need to do at this particular time. 
the word I can give you was through the Holy Spirit. He's the only partner which heaven gave us. You heard me. That's through the Holy Spirit. He's the only partner heaven has given you. Once you together get together, he will take from Jesus and give you. And once you have Jesus' things, then you are ready to do Jesus' work. You are ready to go to another level. And I pray that God will build you up and strengthen you and keep you and fill you with the Holy Spirit. And he will use you mightily because the best is yet to come. You are bigger than who you are. You are bigger than what you are. And I know for sure that God has a bigger plan for you. In Jesus' name. Amen.